Here we go again. Our second installment of Properties of Exponents, Part 3 and Part 4. Integers and exponents, and then we're going to put it all together and simplify expressions with exponents. So yes, you do need to know how to mul do all the multiplication properties of exponents and the division properties of exponents before jumping into the next part. So here we go, part three, integers and exponents. I feel like we should be telling a story. So let's just take a look at this problem. I have five to the fifth over five to the eighth. And first of all, it's a division problem. So score, because you know your division rules. Division rule says if you have the same base, you just subtract your exponents. And it's always numerator, takeaway, denominator. And five, takeaway eight is Oh, negative 3. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. No, you did it correct. 5 to the 5th. 5 take away 8 is negative 3. Well, let's just look at it this way. 5 to the 5th means I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 fives in my numerator. And 5 to the 8th means I have 8 fives in my denominator. And how many fives does that leave? That leaves me 3 fives in my denominator, or 1 over 5 cubed. So. This is an example of what it means to have a negative exponent. A power with a negative exponent equals 1 divided by that power with its opposite exponent. So 5 to the negative 3 is exactly the same as 1 over 5 cubed. They mean the same thing because we can totally see by the example up here that if I put 5 to the 5th in the numerator and spell it all out with all those 5's, 5 to the 8th in denominator, I certainly end up with 3 5's left. So 5 to the negative 3rd is 1 over 5 cubed. And yes, 5 cubed is less than 1,000, so you need to figure it out. So it's 1 over 125. All right, so what does that look like with just letters and algebra? So b to the negative n power means you just take the reciprocal 1 over b and just make your power positive. So let's try it. You ready? Oh, before we can try it, you must read this bottom part. You can never leave an answer with a negative exponent. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. You must always have a positive exponent in your final answer. So if you're looking at your answer and going, I think I'm done. If you see any negative exponents, you're not done. Just so you know. So here we go. All right, we have the same base. Okay, so same base. So that means what do you do what with the exponents? We add. Okay, so negative 3 plus 5 is negative 2. Now, do not leave me a negative exponent. We just read that rule like really seriously. We read it with a very stern voice. So we're going to take 1 over 2 to the positive 2 power. So if 2 to the negative 2 power just means I'm going to take 1 over, I'm going to take the reciprocal of 2, which is 1 half, and make it a positive 2 power. And we know 2 squared is less than 1,000. It's 1 fourth. That's your answer. So we used our multiplication rule this time. Same base, you add your exponents. So let's try this one. Oh, now we're going to use our what rule? Division rule. So 6 to the 6, or 6 to the 5th, divided by 6 to the 8th. So same base, we can subtract our exponent, and 5 take away 8 is negative 3. Again, it's numerator, take away denominator, 100% of the time. That, how else will you know if you have a, a positive or a negative number? 6 to the negative third, I cannot leave negative exponent, so I take the reciprocal, so it's 1 over 6 to the positive 3 power. And 6 cubed, yep, that's less than 1,000, it's 216. Final answer, 1 over 216. All right, these are yours. Pause me now. Pause me now. Don't let me give away the answers. Come back when you're done. So glad you came back. Probably couldn't avoid me. So we've got our division rule this time. Same base. We're going to subtract our exponents. Numerator, take away denominator. And 2 take away 3 is negative 1. So we need to take the reciprocal of 5. So that's 1 over 5 to the first power. And it is very bad math grammar to leave an exponent of 1. So please just write it as 1 fifth. All right. We all know that there's a 1. Okay, multiplication rule. Yep, we have the same base, so we need to add our exponents. So we have negative 6 plus 7 is 1. And 7 to the first power is 7. Wow, that was nice. No, yeah, no bad math grammar. Not in this class, no. Okay, wow, that was the end of part 3. So now you know all the three different parts. You know multiplication rules, you know division rules of exponents, and now you know integer rules of exponents because part four is simplifying expressions with exponents. Ooh, that's right. That means you need to know all of the properties and you need to know when to use them. Uh-huh. 
For example, check out this expression. Um, well, I thought it was going to be really more exciting than that, but I guess it's c or 4 times c to the 0 power. All right, so this, this is 4 times c to the 0 power. Order of operations states that you have to solve exponents before multiplying. All right, so c to the 0 power means anything to the 0 power is 1. So we really have 4 times 1, which is Okay, that was like a really easy example. Why would I even put that in here? But I just want you to know anything to the zero power, even a letter to the zero power is one. That's why I put it in there. Yeah. Okay. Practice simplifying expressions with integer exponents. All right. So we have 2m cubed times 6m to the fourth, and then we're going to square it. This is uh, all kinds of stuff we could see here. Now, we're going to simplify what is in parentheses. We're going to just multiply our numbers, 2 times 6, which is 12. And notice our m's are the same base. And when you have the same base, we do what with our exponents? We add m to the third times m to the fourth is m to the seventh. So all we did was combine what was in parentheses. And according to order of operations, since there's no equal sign here, we're just going to follow order of operations. We're simplifying parentheses, and then we take care of exponents. So now we're going to do power to a power. Everybody's going to get a power of 2. Everybody's going to get 1. 12 is going to get a power of 2. m to the 7 is getting a power of 2. And 12 squared is 144. And we have 144 m to the 14th. Ta-da! You have just simplified an expression with integer exponents. Moving on. Number 2. OK. So we have 3y squared times 2y, and it's got a power on the outside. Now, because this 3 is not a part of this whole parentheses, you can't multiply bef until you take care of exponents. So technically, you don't have parentheses this time. Technically, you have exponents, then multiplying. I know. So let's give everybody a power of 3 that is in the parentheses where the 3 is at. So the 2 gets a power of 3. The y gets a power of 3. And we should probably take a look. we got the y's have the same base, so y squared and y cubed, so we can go ahead and add those up, which is y to the fifth. And now I need to multiply these two, but before I can multiply them, I need to take care of 2 cubed. And 2 cubed is 8. So we have 3 times 8, y to the fifth, and 3 times 8 is 24, y to the fifth. Not bad. I think if I were to do this problem again, I'd probably take care of 2 cubed before I put my y's together. but. We got the same answer. Just try to stay organized. And write your stuff out, line by line. Trust me, if you need me to send you paper, just let me know, line by line. Make a lot of, lot of writing. Okay. Ooh, our first chance with a negative exponent on a big problem. OK. Is there anything we can simplify in the middle? Nope. So it looks like everybody's going to get a negative 3. We're going to have 6 to the negative 3. We're going to do j squared to the negative 3, k to the 4th to the negative 3. That's right, 6 to the negative 3, and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 4 to the times negative 3 is negative 12. All right, um, what do you think we should do next? Well, we can't do anything with a negative exponent, so we need to take the reciprocal. So the 6 to the negative 3rd, um, we need to make it positive, so it's got to go to the denominator j to the negative 6 has to go to the denominator. k to the negative 12th has to go to the denominator. That means you're left with just a 1 in the numerator because there was nothing left. In order for this to go to the denominator, you have to have a numerator, correct? So now 6 is a positive 3 to the positive 3rd power, j to the positive 6th power, k to the positive 12th power. Are we done? No, no, 6 cubed. We can solve 6 cubed. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6 is 216. So we have 1 over 216, j to the 6, k to the 12. All right, so again, we distributed that negative 3. That was our first thing we did because we couldn't simplify what was in parentheses. It was just multiply, multiply, multiply. All right, wow, we get to do more. Hmm, we've got a division problem because that bar means divide. We have 4 divided by 2, x squared divided by x, y divided by y squared. OK, so let's do 4 divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that leaves 2 in the numerator, 1 in the denominator, but I don't have to write the 1 because I have these letters. So what should we do next? 
Another rule you need to know is when you're done, you can't have two x's and two y's. You have to have everything combined. If I have an x in my answer, it can only happen one time. If I have a y in my answer, it can only happen one time. So the x's have the same base. Subtract their exponents. 2 take away 1. Remember, it's numerator, take away denominator, and 2 take away 1. 2 take away 1 is 1. Since this is positive, the answer of x to the 1 stays in the numerator. So I have 2 x to the 1 power, and I still have my y's, y over y squared. So y over y squared. So I can't have two y's in my answer. Nope, nope, nope. So now let's do this with the y's. Okay. The y's have the same base. Subtract their exponents. Remember, it's numerator, take away denominator. So this time it's 1 take away 2. And 1 take away 2 is negative 1. Since this is negative, y to the negative 1 has to move to the denominator to become positive. Because if I write my answer up here, it would be y to the negative 1. I can't have a negative exponent. So y has to go to the denominator with a positive exponent. All right, you may want to pause and suck this one in because this is really what we're going to be doing a lot of. I think they throw a lot of these in the problems in your homework. Okay? You can't leave your answer with an x in the numerator, x in the denominator, y in the numerator, and the y in the denominator. So again, we did 2 take away 1, it was positive 1, so x got to stay in the numerator. When we did the y's, 1 take away 2 is negative 1, so the y cannot stay in the numerator because the power is negative, so it goes to the denominator. All right. <sighs> Ooh, well, isn't that pretty? All right. Well, we've got a lovely fraction here and then an exponent out here. So let's clean up our, um, yeah, before distributing the power of 4, let's clean up what's in parentheses. So let's simplify this. So we have x to the 7th and x squared. Well, those are the same base. So what are we going to do? 7 take away 2. And 7 take away 2 is 5. Now that's positive. So x to the fifth stays in the numerator. Now do your y's. y cubed and y to the first. We have to subtract numerator take away denominator. 3 take away 1 is 2. That's positive. y squared stays in the numerator. That looks much nicer now, doesn't it? Much better than where we started. All right. Now we need to give everybody a power of 4. Let's get the power. Distribute the power of 4 to everything. So we do this by multiplying. So 4 times 5, 4 times 2. We end up with x to the 20th, y to the 8th. Ding, 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 ding. You did it. We can't simplify variables. That's all you got to do. So yeah, we cleaned up our fraction first. Basically took care of division before we took care of this exponent. We took care of parentheses. Ooh, oh, that's not fair, man. But this is probably like one of your homework problems, so we should probably tolerate it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's take care of what's in parentheses before we tackle this negative 2 exponent. All right, so my fraction 27 over 18 doesn't go unevenly like the last one, or whichever problem that was. But do they have a GCF? 27, 18 could be a fraction by itself. They're both divisible by 9. So if I do 27 divided by 9, my numerator has a 3. When I take the denominator of 18 and divide it by 9, that leaves me a 2. So I can reduce that fraction part. So it really looks like this, 3 halves. Because I divided the 27 by 9 and got 3, the 18 divided by 9 is 2. All you did was reduce the fraction. Everything else looks as hideous as it was before. <laughs> and it does look really bad. Okay. Let's do our w's. You ready? Remember, it's numerator, take away denominator. Negative 4, take away 6. Okay, negative 4, take away 6 is negative 10. Since that's a negative, w to the negative 10 needs to go where to be positive? The denominator. So we're left with the 3, and x cubed. See, 3x cubed. I have my 2, and now w to the 10th has to be here because when I subtracted negative 4 take away 6, it was negative 10. I can't write negative 10 in the numerator. Uh, uh, uh. Has to go to the denominator, w to the 10th. All right, let's do our x's. Are you ready? I have x cubed take away negative 5. Again, 3 take away negative 5. So 3 take away negative 5 is 8 because you do keep change opposite, so it's 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 is positive. Where do our positive exponents go? The numerator. So in our numerator, it'll be 3x to the 8th, because it was positive, and that just leaves our denominator with that 2w to the 10th. Now we can go take care of this. Are you ready to give everybody a negative 2 exponent? I'm not, but we're just going to have to go for it. So here we go. 
Everybody's getting a negative 2. Yeah, I've got the power. 3 to the negative 2. 8 times a negative 2 is negative 16. 2 gets a negative 2. W to the 10th gets a negative 2. What a mess this is. And again, this is not your final answer. You are not allowed to leave negative exponents. So to make them positive, you need to take the reciprocal. Move the terms with negative exponents from the numerator to the denominator. Ooh, let's hold that thought. So I can take everything in the numerator with a negative exponent and just put it in the denominator. And it automatically makes it positive. Oop, we'll come back here. Move the terms with the negative exponents from the denominator to the numerator. So I can take this 2 to the negative 2. If I move it up here, it becomes 2 squared. I like that. I can take w to the negative 20. And if I just move it to the numerator, it becomes w to the positive 20. That's how this move happened. I took my negative exponents in the numerator and all I did was move them to the denominator and made them positive. Took my denominator with negative exponents, anywhere there was a negative exponent, and I moved it. That is a legit move, total legit. Last thing, or is 2 squared less than 1,000? Uh-huh. Is 3 squared less than 1,000? Uh-huh. Final answer, 4w to the 20th, 9x to the 16th. That was a painful problem. And yes, I'm pretty sure you have some in your assignment, so you may want to just save this. I'm sorry, but this is what it is. Okay, so one of the things you may want to do is um, pull up the PDF version I have um, of the same presentation and print this page because it lists all of your properties um, of your exponents all on the same page. And then at least you have a cheat sheet handy dandy right close by. So now if you do get stuck on some of the homework problems, drop me an email. I'll walk you through them anytime. So have a great day and have fun with those exponents or pretend like they're having fun with the exponents. <laughs> okay. <laughs>